G'day, Josh from the Automotive Clinic again. All right, we had a someone message on our TikTok and request to know a little bit more about load testing and why we use certain test lights for certain different load tests. So what we've got here is I've got sort of three or four different test lights. Um, first up, we've got a H4 headlight globe. Now, headlight globe, uh, we're going to hook this up and I'll show you the current draw that you get from that. So if I hook that up to the power supply, that's at 14.3 volts. As you can see, globe's on. We've got about six amps roughly so something like that something that draws six amps you're looking at a dc motor so your fan motors and things like that so if we wanted to load test the wiring the connectors on a, a circuit for a fan then a h4 headlight globe's perfect um, where you wouldn't use something like this is you know if we were load testing a sensor power or something like that that's when you can cause yourself and start to cause yourself trouble um, that's where having multiple different test lights come in play so if we hook up another one, um, this little one here is just an incandescent test light, you'll see there's a massive amount of current draw difference. So if we hook that up, 160 milliamps, roughly, for the incandescent light. That's a huge, huge difference to 6 amps. Now, what could happen if you've got a high resistance or a bad circuit on, say, we'll go back to your fan circuit. If you use a very, very small load, so a small test light, that test light may still light up. It might not be as bright as it would normally, but you know you, you can quite easily pass that off as a good circuit. With that, same as using a multimeter. So if I hooked up an amp clamp or something to, you know, a, an intact circuit, but a, not a, a functioning circuit, a circuit that's got high resistance, our voltmeter, you know, whether it's an amp clamp voltmeter, whatever you're, you're reading volts DC, will read say 14.3 volts. And the test light may still light. But if you test that circuit, you know, if our fans aren't operating, our fans might still be okay. But if you test that circuit with the appropriate amount of current going through it, which would be, you know, six amps plus, it wouldn't be able to light that headlight glow brightly. It would light dimly or it wouldn't light at all. So that's why we load test. Um, this is another sort of standard test light. So if I hook this up, this is what you buy. This is literally like a $5 test light. You can see we've got about 330 milliamps roughly so there's three different levels of sort of load that you can put on a circuit you've got your normal test light your incandescent test light now the other one or the other option is led test lights um or do i just have to hook this up slightly differently the yeah, led test lights are they have their time and place um an LED test light's good for computer circuits somewhere where you're, you know, you really, really want to be safe. This is going to be a bit of a pain to hook up. Um, but an LED test light has very, very minimal current draw. As you can see, it, it's reading 14.1 volts, but next to no current draw, not no current draw that's at least. So the current draw that you'll have go through an LED test light is minimal, 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 minimal. Un not even readable. Um, now, that is this is where i see people get you know in, in trouble they hook a test light up they buy a test light they see snap on or whoever's advertising it cool new test light shows you voltage as well as you know good power ground lights up red lights up green but if you hook this led test light up and you see 12 volts we could literally have one strand of copper left in that cable that's going into our circuit and you're still going to see 12 volts because this light here puts absolutely no load on the circuit now it is computer safe but when you're not loading a circuit up, you can't tell if it's got good, you know, circuit integrity. You might have corroded pins, a connector issue, etc. So LED test lights are fantastic. They're good for quick checks, but you have to be really, really aware that they put no load on the circuit. And I can't count the amount of times someone said to me, oh, look, we've got, you know, 12 volts here or 14 volts here. They get their test light, they hook it up and they go, okay, it says 14. Then we go and get a normal test light or even, you know, depending on the circuit, a H4 headlight globe or we've got more like your in series indicator globe and brake light globe to actually load test that circuit properly doesn't hold current or doesn't hold voltage you know load test doesn't load test properly so be very careful with led test lights um, they are good they have their place but you can get yourself in trouble very quick with them so i hope that explanation sort of covers what you're looking for um, as an idea you know normally i'll use a normal test light for pretty much everything the incandescent one's fantastic because it's small um, led ones do have their place too but i don't get a whole lot of use out of the led test light in that case i normally just use one of the amp clamp or a voltmeter um, 
with your load testing, be very, very cautious of what you're, you know, pulling through a circuit, what you put a headlight globe on or what you put a brake light globe on. Don't just go stick this into anything because you will cause damage. You will cook computers and BCMs and fuse blocks and all the above, um, especially now that all your lighting and things like that on a lot of modern cars are BCM controlled. You can cause a lot of damage pulling current through those circuits. So be very cautious. You've got to know how the circuit works before you can test it. Um, but load testing with the correct load is the only way to or only correct way at least only viable way to verify if that whole circuit is good you know up to that connector that you're testing if you're testing a, a power and a ground at a connector with a load test you can verify that okay our circuit's good we've got no you know corrosion no massive amount of voltage drop or no split pins no wiring that's frayed or bent or anything like that so Load testing is very important, but you've got to be very cautious of how you do it, and you've got to know what circuit you're working on and how to test it before you do it. So, thanks for watching.